Galatians chapter 6, and we're going to start in verse 1. Hallelujah. We welcome those that may be watching live by internet or may watch this archive later. Praise the Lord. We welcome you tonight. Don't you know Jesus died for your sins? Hallelujah. And all you have to do is say yes to that. Hallelujah. It's a free gift. Praise the Lord. Seek Him right now while He may be found because the day is coming where it's going to be hard to find the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. Revelations chapter 6 starting in verse 1. I'm not going to hold you very long tonight, amen, but amen. These are important verses and we should understand the meaning of these, amen. Revelations chapter 6 verse 1. And it says, and I... and." I saw when the land opened one of the seals, and I heard, as it were, the noise of thunder, one of the four beasts saying, Come and see. And I saw, and behold, a white horse, and he who sat on him had a bow, and a crown was given unto him, and he went forth conquering and to conquer. And we'll stop right there. Amen. And tonight, I'm just going to minister a few minutes. I ain't going to hold you very long on pseudo-love. A false love. Pseudo love. Heavenly Father, Lord, we love you. And Father, we thank you, Lord, for what you've given us, Lord, your Son who died for our sins. And Father, we just ask in the name of Jesus, Lord, that you pour out your Spirit tonight upon me and upon the people and those watching um, by Internet, Lord. And let your grace flow freely tonight, Lord. And we'll give you all the praise and glory. Touch hearts and lives in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. You may be seated. Here in the book of Revelations, these are very well-known scriptures, and of course, we all know this um, as the four horsemen, amen. And these four horsemen represent the Antichrist and what he will do during, as when the Great Tribulation starts, amen. But I want you to sh- uh, see something, church. I know we think about of the, the Antichrist and, and, and the devil and, and Satan and how powerful he is. And I want you to reread these scriptures with me. Just look at this. This is the first point I want to get across tonight. He says, and I saw when the Lamb, yes, amen. when the Lamb, amen. Are you getting that, church? Amen. The devil don't have no power over God. Amen. The Antichrist can't even come on the scene until the Lamb says so. Amen. It says, and when I saw the Lamb open one of the seals. Amen. The Antichrist thinks he's going to be able to get rid of God and get rid of Christ. But let me tell you, the Lord, the King of Kings, Lord of Lords, Christ Jesus has power over every single person and even the Antichrist. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Because when the Lamb decides to open the seal, then and only then can the Antichrist come on the scene. Amen. I'm trying to get across tonight this first point. God has everything in control. The Lamb is in control. The Lamb decides Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen. And it says, when I saw, when the Lamb opened the first seal, and I heard as it were the noise of thunder, one of the four beasts saying, come and see. And I saw, and behold, a white horse, and he who sat on him had a bow, and a crown was given unto him, and he went forth conquering and to conquer. Amen. And that first verse, amen, God is in control, amen, God decides, amen, the Lamb decides, amen. We like to, we always uh, seem to think that the devil is God's adversary. God don't have no adversaries. Amen. I said, God don't have any adversaries. The devil's our adversary, amen. But God has no adversaries. God tells the devil to jump, and the devil says, how high you want me to jump, amen. Praise the Lord. God says, where you been? And the, and the devil just starts opening his mouth like we see in Book of Job. Well, I've been going here, and I've been going here. I've been going here and everywhere, amen. God is in control. God has no adversaries, amen. We have an adversary, the devil, amen, who tries to accuse us, amen. He tries to deceive us. He tries to lie to us. He tries to destroy our faith. But let me tell you, God has no adversary, amen. He tells the devil to jump, and he says, how high, amen. He says, get out, and he makes a hole through the wall, amen. God is in control, and we see this in the first scripture. When the Lamb decides to open the seal, then and only then can the Antichrist come on the scene. Amen. Let your hearts not be troubled, church. God is still on the throne. Hallelujah. Amen. 
Praise the Lord. And when the Lord does decide, and this is going to happen after the rapture, amen, the Lord will open up the first seal, amen, and the scroll that we uh, talked about and uh, taught about uh, several Thursdays ago. And the Antichrist will make his debut. Amen. And we see here uh, from the vision John saw, he saw a white horse and one who sat on him had a bow and a crown was given unto him and he went forth conquering and to conquer. First of all, it says he had a white horse. Amen. That white horse means he's going to present himself as a prince of peace. Amen. He's going to pretend to be Christ. Amen. He's another Jesus. Amen. And he's going to bring forth another gospel and he'll bring forth another spirit. Amen. The Antichrist. Amen. He tries to mimic God. Amen. Tries to pretend to be God. How do you know that? Well, Jesus comes back on a white horse with the vest dipped in blood. Well, the Antichrist shows up with the white horse. Amen. Jesus Christ is the Prince of Peace. Well, the Antichrist comes and tries to proclaim peace. Amen. He's another Christ. Amen. A false Christ. Amen. And he brings forth another gospel and another spirit, amen. And the white horse here represents, amen, that he's going to try to be a prince of peace, amen, trying to proclaim peace to the whole world, amen. And he'll even make a seven-year treaty between Israel, between Palestine, and between the Muslims, which has never been done before in history, amen. He will convince the Muslims to dare down the the dome of the rock, amen, and to rebuild the Jewish temple, amen. And he's going to capture the world's attention, amen, by bringing a false peace to the Middle East, amen. And he will conquer many nations through diplomacy, amen, amen. The Antichrist, when he shows up, amen, he's going to show up, amen, and Satan is going to give all his power, amen, onto this Antichrist, amen, more power than he's ever given to anyone before, amen, an unholy anointing, or what I call it, amen, to be able to deceive people, amen, and persuade people, amen, to believe a lie, and what he will do, amen, he will figure out a way to bring peace between the Israel, Palestine, and Muslims, and even get them to sign a seven-year peace treaty, a ceasefire, amen, and all the world will be in shock and awe because of this, amen, and this is what this white horse here of the Antichrist represents. He'll bring a false peace. He'll bring a false love, a pseudo love. Amen. Proclaiming to uh, bring peace to the world. Proclaiming to all come together as one. To, to proclaim. Amen. That us human race have to stick together and work out our differences and just get along with everybody. He'll bring a pseudo love, a false peace, amen. He'll even convince the Muslims to bring, tear down the dome of the rock and rebuild the Jewish temple. How do you know that? Because the Bible says so. If you read in the uh, book of Daniel, amen, and all the visions Daniel had, you get a good glimpse and an idea of how the Antichrist will bring this across, amen, and in Revelations. And he'll capture the world's attention by bringing a false love and a false peace, amen, to the Middle East and to the world, amen. And he'll be able to conquer many nations, amen, through this, amen, through this false love. And it also says that uh, he had a bow, amen, a bow, but it had no arrows. It mentions no arrows with the bow, amen, amen. And this bow means he will be preparing for war while preaching peace. Amen. Because he has no arrows. Let me say that again. Amen. It shows he has a bow. Amen. And normally when somebody was on a horse with a bow, they would have the the wooden part of the bow on their back with the string across them, across their shoulder. Amen. And this symbolizes, amen, that he's preparing for war. Amen. But he won't make war yet because it shows, it doesn't show him with any arrows. Amen. So he's sitting on a white horse proclaiming peace, but really he's preparing for war. Amen. Amen. 
And he will be able to do what five presidents of the United States have not been able to do and what even Obama hasn't even been able to do. Bring peace, amen, a false love to the Middle East, amen, and get them to sign a peace treaty for seven years, amen. And Satan will give his most power um, to deceive the nations through this diplomacy, this false love, this pseudo-love, amen. A good example um, of, a, of a type of an antichrist would have been Hitler, amen. Hitler promoted peace, amen. If you look in history, Hitler promoted peace, amen. When he got into power, amen, he got the German economy up and running, amen, out of the shambles of World War I, amen. And everything looked so great, Amen. While at the whole time he was preparing for war. That's what the Antichrist is going to do. You take a Hitler and multiply it by a hundred. That's how deceptive the Antichrist will be to the entire world. Amen. Just like what Hitler done. Amen. Satan has no new tricks. Amen. He just takes old trips, wraps it up in a new box and shoves it out. Amen. And just like what Hitler did, the Antichrist, amen, will come the closest to, to destroying the Jews, amen. That's what the, uh, the Hitler tried to do. He was an Antichrist, amen. He promoted peace, amen. He even got the whole economy of Germany, amen, out of the shambles of World War I and got the economy up and running of the nation, amen. And everybody thought he was such a great leader. But the whole time, amen, he was preparing for war. Amen. And he prepared for, and then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, they called it the Blitzkrieg. He just sent his tanks rolling through France. Amen. Rolling through Spain. Rolling through Poland without any hesitation. Amen. And that's exactly what the Antichrist will do. Amen. He will persuade, amen. He'll even, after the rapture happens and there's mass chaos and nations are in martial law because millions are missing because of the rapture, and then all of a sudden this man's going to show up, amen, and he's just going to, it's just like he's going to try to get the world back in order and everyone's just going to be in shock and all because of his pseudo-love and the false peace, and then out of nowhere, just like what Hitler did, he will attack, and he will come the closest to wiping out the Jews than any other man before in history. Amen. Many have asked, where will this Antichrist come from? We see on the internet and people's blogs and that saying, Obama's the Antichrist, or this president's the Antichrist, or this leader's the Antichrist. Well, let's see what the Bible has to say, who the Antichrist will be. Amen. If you look in the book of Daniel, we get a glimpse and a hint of where... The Antichrist will come from. First of all, Daniel had several visions. In his first vision in Daniel 7, chapter 7, verses 7 through 8, um, the Bible reads that he will come from the old Roman Empire territory. Amen. If you go back and study uh, the book of Daniel, and if you read chapter 7, verses 7 to 8, you can clearly see that the Antichrist will come from the old Roman Empire territory. Amen. So that rules out anybody in America being the Antichrist. Amen. In Daniel's second vision, in Daniel chapter 8, verse 9, and write these down, amen, and go home and study them and you'll see. In Daniel chapter 8, verse 9, the Bible reads that he will come from an area where Alexander the Great conquered in the old Roman territory. Amen. Which includes Israel, Lebanon, Syria, Iraq, Afghanistan, and part of Pakistan. So in Daniel's first vision in chapter 7, amen, we get a glimpse that the Antichrist is going to come from the old Roman territory. And if you remember the old Roman territory in your history books, Rome had conquered most of all of Europe, a little bit of Britain. It conquered a, a part of the Middle East, and it conquered northern Africa. So the Antichrist is going to come from this area. Amen. And Daniel's second vision, it gets narrowed down even farther. Amen. A uh, a part of that old Roman territory where Alexander the Great had conquered once. So we know that the Antichrist will either come from Israel, he will come from Lebanon, he'll come from Syria, he'll come from Iraq, he'll come from Afghanistan, and he'll come from part of Pakistan. And then Daniel had a third vision in Daniel chapter 11 verse 40. And from this, the Bible reads that he is a kingdom, the kingdom of the north, which refers to north of Israel. So more than likely, the Antichrist will come from Syria. 
Amen. Now, I can't say he'll be from Syria, amen, but the Bible does say it'll be the kingdom from the north. And the only kingdom that was north of Israel, amen, was Syria. Amen. So while I can't say 100% he will come from Syria, there is good idea and evidence, amen, that he's going to come from the old Roman territory, amen, according to Daniel's first vision. And his second vision is going to be somewhere in the Middle East of the old Roman territory, Lebanon, Iraq, Afghanistan, part of, a part of Pakistan, Israel, somewhere in there. And then in Daniel's third vision, amen, he sees that the Antichrist's kingdom is from the north, so more than likely he will be a Syrian Jew. Amen. And again, those are in Daniel chapter 7, Daniel chapter 8, and Daniel chapter 11. Amen. Write those down and go home and study and see for yourself. Amen. I know uh, when it comes to Daniel and his visions and prophecies, they're hard to understand at times. But if you ask the Lord, he'll help you. Amen. Hey, he is faithful. He's good and just. Amen. You got the Holy Spirit living inside of you for a reason. Amen. But from this we can conclude, amen, that there's a good possibility that according to Daniel's visions, he'll be from Syria. Amen. Who will he be? Israel will not accept a Messiah that's a Gentile. So we know that the Antichrist will be Jewish. Amen. How do you know that? Because Israel will not accept any Messiah that's a non-Jew or a Gentile. And not only that, in Daniel chapter 11, verse 37. And I just want to read this point really quickly. It says, neither shall he, and this is talking about the Antichrist, in Daniel chapter 11, verse 37. Neither shall he, the Antichrist, regard the God of his fathers. Amen talking about the father, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Amen. Then it goes on to say, nor desire of women, nor regard any God, for he shall magnify himself above all. So we know he's going to be Jewish, amen, because the Bible says that he will not regard the God of his fathers. So that means he's Jewish, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, amen, is which that's referring to. So we know that he will probably come from the Syrian area and that he will be a Jew. Amen. Because he won't regard the God of his fathers, amen, meaning his lineage, Jewish. And according to Daniel's visions, first vision, second vision, and third vision, in Daniel 7, 8, and 11, amen, it's more than likely he's going to come from the Syria area, amen, and be Jewish. Amen. And why will the people believe him? Amen. We look at this and read this and we think, my Lord, doesn't the devil know he's going to lose? Amen. We look at this church, and I know it looks gloom and doom, but let me tell you, if you read the end of the book, guess who wins, amen? The Lord Jesus Christ still wins, amen? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. But people would ask, amen, common sense, why would Israel fall for this? How could they be so deceived, amen? And I'm going to give you the answer, Amen. Go to 2 Thessalonians. Chapter 2. Starting in verse 9. We're going to read 9 through 12. Everyone have it? Amen. It says in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, starting in verse 9, it says, Even him, which is the Antichrist, whose coming is after the working of Satan, with all power and signs and lying wonders, and with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them who perish, because they received not the love of the truth, that they might be saved. That's the reason right there, church. Let me read that again. And with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them who perish, because, if you ever notice it, when you read the Bible and start studying out, it always goes back to the cross as the answer. Amen. Or the reason why something happens, because somebody doesn't put their faith in the blood of Jesus. 
Amen. It says, and with all deceivableness of unrighteousness and in them who perish because they receive not the love of the truth that they might be saved. Amen. In other words, they rejected the blood of Jesus Christ, amen, and they loved something else, and because of that, they are deceived, amen, and will be deceived by lying uh, wonders and power and signs working of Satan, amen. And it says, and for this cause, God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie. Amen. That's why people are running around with every single fad that's out there. Amen. That's why the church world is in a mess. Because Satan, amen, is presenting himself as an angel in light in many churches. Amen. And people are garbling up. Amen. The new fads. Amen. The lies. Amen. Because God has allowed them to have strong delusion because they receive not the love of the truth. Christ and Him crucified. The blood of Jesus. The cross. And because of their rejection of that, they believe the lie. Amen. That's why the church world's in a mess and that's why Israel will be deceived by the Antichrist. Because 2,000 years ago, Amen. Israel said, we have no king but Caesar. Let his blood be upon our hands. Amen. And they rejected Christ as their Messiah. Amen. And because of that, God will give them strong delusion and they will believe a lie. They will believe the Antichrist and all his false wonders and false miracles. Amen. Saying this is the Messiah. It's the same thing the church has been doing for the last 2,000 years. Amen. The church has slowly rejected the blood of Jesus, have taken the cross out of everything. Amen. And because of it, they have had strong delusion and they're believing lies. Amen. They believe everything under the sun except the blood of Jesus and faith in that. John the Beloved said, there are many... Antichrist out there, the spirit of the Antichrist, amen. When one rejects the cross, God will allow strong delusion to come upon them and will believe a lie, amen. Because Israel was looking for a physical peace and safety, amen. They were looking for a physical peace and safety, just as the church has been looking for a Spiritual peace and safety outside of the cross of Christ. Amen. Let me say that again. That's important. Listen to that. Now listen. Amen. Israel is looking for a physical peace and safety just as the church has been looking for spiritual peace and safety outside the blood of Jesus. And because of that, they'll believe anything, any lie that Satan conjures up. Amen. In 1 Thessalonians, chapter 5, verse 3, it even says, For when they shall say, Peace and safety, then sudden destruction comes upon them, as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. We see from this verse, amen, that they're looking for peace and safety, just like the church of today is looking for a spiritual peace and safety in the world, outside of Christ. Amen. Amen. I can remember several years ago on the news as, uh, and of course this has been going on for years and years and decades where there's been fighting with Israel and the Palestines, amen, and the rockets were going over and I was at work the one day and I, and I just happened on my break to see the news and it, it just stirred my spirit up, amen, it, Palestine had shot some rockets over and of course Israel retaliated to defend herself. And the newscast came on to one of the leaders of the Israeli government. And they said, well, why are you doing this? And the exact words that they said, these were the exact words over the news. They said, all we're looking for is peace and safety. And it stirred my spirit up when I heard that right over the news, amen. The interviewers, as the rockets were going over and Israel was bombing as a retaliation to to push the Palestines back from their rockets shooting over and... 
And of course the news would turn it over and try to uh, twist it and try to say Israel was the bad guy. And they said, Israel, why are you doing this? Amen. And, and the government, the, the, the people in leadership, amen. And it, there was a lady standing there and I could still see it plain as day on the news. And she just looked at the camera and said, all we're looking for is peace and safety. They've rejected Christ Jesus, the Messiah. Amen. They're looking for another Messiah and all they're looking for is peace and safety. And because of that, they will be deceived because the Antichrist will come as a white horse but he will have a bow on his back preparing for war. And so she'll believe a lie just like what the church has been believing the spirit of the Antichrist a false peace and a false safety a false love. Amen. A pseudo love. Amen. People will ask, well, well, what will the Antichrist be preaching? Amen. Well, go into your churches uh, that aren't preaching the truth. You'll find out very quickly. Amen. Because the Antichrist is going to do the exact same thing. It's going to be secret sensitive. It's going to be friendly. It's going to try to bring everything into the world. Amen. That's what the church is doing. Going against the Bible. Amen. Spirit of the Antichrist. Amen. You want to know what the Antichrist will be preaching? Amen. I don't uh, advise you to go into these churches, but if you really want to know, just click on the channel on the television and listen to some of the false uh, apostles and false prophets and false pastors and false teachers and see what they're proclaiming because the Antichrist will do the same thing. A false pseudo love. He will exalt himself and deny God. Amen. We see that in a Daniel 11, verses 36 to 43. Amen. He will exalt self. The Bible says he will exalt himself, but what he's really doing is exalting self. Amen. And denying God. Don't we know there's something today that's doing the exact same thing? It's called psychology. Yes, that's right. It exalts self and it denies the Bible. Amen. It's the spirit of the Antichrist is what psychology is. Amen. And that's what the Antichrist will do. He will exalt self. It's in Daniel. That's what Daniel saw in the vision. That's what he's going to do. He's going to exalt himself and deny God. And the spirit of the Antichrist does the same thing. It exalts self and denies the Bible. And that's exactly what psychology does. He will promote peace, a worldly peace, humanism, humanitarianism. Oh, let's just all live as one. Let's all just get along and ignore sin and never talk about it ever again. You're a good moral person, just let's all get along and let's just help each other out. And You're a good person and... This is what the Antichrist is going to do. It's the spirit. Don't we see this in our churches today? The spirit of the Antichrist. Amen. Amen. He will flatter the people. Amen. Raising self-esteem. Let's go to Daniel. I want to show you. I just don't want you to take my word for it. I want you to see, amen, what the Antichrist will be preaching. Amen. Daniel 11 Let's start in verses 36. 36, and we're going to read through 43. The Bible reads, everybody have it? Hallelujah. The Bible reads, And the king shall do according to his will. And he shall exalt himself and magnify himself above every god and shall speak marvelous things against the god of gods and shall prosper till the indignation be accomplished for that is determined shall be done. Neither shall he regard the god of his fathers nor desire of women nor regard any god for he shall magnify himself above all. But in his estate shall he honor the God of forces and a God whom his fathers knew not shall he honor with gold and silver and with precious stones and pleasant things. Thus shall he do in the most strongholds with a strange God 
whom he shall acknowledge and increase with glory, and he shall cause them to rule over many, and shall divide the land for gain. And at that time, at the end, shall the king of the south push at him, and the king of the north shall come against him like a whirlwind, with chariots and with horsemen and with many ships. And he shall enter into the countries and shall overflow and pass over. He shall enter also into the glorious land, and many countries shall be overthrown. But these shall escape out of his hand, even Edom and Moab, and the chief of the children of Amen. He shall stretch forth his hand also upon the countries, and the land of Egypt shall not escape. But he shall have power over the treasures of gold and of silver, and over all the precious things of Egypt, and the Libyans and the Ethiopians shall be at his steps. We see from this in the first few verses of 36, he's going to exalt himself. Amen. And if, he, and if the Antichrist exalts himself, guess what the spirit of the Antichrist does? It exalts self, amen, and denies the Bible. And that's exactly, I'm sorry to say it, but that's exactly what world psychology does. James, the apostle James, called earthly wisdom devilish, amen, devilish. Because it denies the Bible, because the Bible says deny yourself, take up your cross, and follow Christ. Amen. Psychology says, amen, embrace self, take up your works, amen, and believe in yourself. And so if the Antichrist is going to exalt himself, guess what? The spirit of the Antichrist exalts self. Amen. It will promote peace. Amen. Amen. And will flatter the people. Amen. And Daniel eleven twenty one. Go back a few verses. It says, And in his estate shall stand up a vile person to whom they shall not give the honor of the kingdom, but he shall come in peaceably and obtain the kingdom by flatteries. Amen. Now, of course, this is talking to one of the kings also in Daniel's time, but it also can be a type of the Antichrist. Amen. A type and the spirit of the Antichrist of what he will do. He will come in peaceably and he will obtain kingdoms and nations and countries by flatteries. Amen. Flattering the people, raising their self-esteem, promoting self and uh, humanism, trying to just get everyone all together as one. Amen. And the world will take note and will be in awe because he'll even be able to deceive the Muslims. He'll be able to deceive Israel and he'll be able to deceive um, the Palestinians and get them to come to a seven-year ceasefire peace treaty. And all the world and all in the United States of America even will be in shock and awe thinking we've had six presidents so far and they haven't been able to do anything. But this man, amen, has been able to proclaim peace. We need to listen to what he says, amen. I'm just telling you what might happen here in the United States, amen. And once again, we ask the question, how could Israel believe this knowing the law of Moses? Amen. Knowing the law of Moses, amen, because Israel uh, looks to the Torah and looks to the law of Moses. Amen. So even with the law, how could they be deceived by this? Just as I said, just as Israel will be fooled by the Antichrist, so has the church been fooled by the spirit. Of the Antichrist. Amen. It's in our churches all over. Amen. A false love. A pseudo love. Proclaiming a spiritual peace and safety. When really behind the scenes. The devil is preparing for war. And preparing for your destruction. And death. Spiritual death. That's what the spirit of the Antichrist does. Amen. It promotes a false peace and safety. And love. While the whole time is plotting your death. Is plotting your spiritual death. Amen. That's what's in most of these mega churches, the spirit of the Antichrist. That's in what's most of these uh, lukewarm churches. That's what's in most of these churches that are preaching everything under the sun except the blood of Jesus. They're promoting a peace and safety. They're using flatteries. They're using things of the world to try to get people in. Promoting a false uh, secure net of safety and peace for the people. But really Satan is plotting their spiritual death into hell. And why is that? Just as we said in uh, 2 Thessalonians, amen, 
Because they received not the love of the truth. And because of that, God will give them strong delusion to where they will believe a lie. Amen. Because he will exalt self. Amen. Psychology. If you look in 2 Timothy. And I'm almost done, church. Chapter 4, verses 3 to 4. It says, For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. But after their own lust shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears, and they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned onto fables. Amen. They're not believing sound doctrine anymore. Not believing about the blood of Jesus anymore. About the cross. About what the Bible says is right and what the Bible says is wrong. Amen. I could give the same question to the church. Amen. Many in the church world will ask, how could Israel believe this knowing the law of Moses? I'll give the same uh, question to the church. Amen. How could the church fall for this knowing what the Bible says? Amen. The Antichrist and the spirit of the Antichrist, amen, promotes a false love, a pseudo love. Pseudo is Latin for false, amen. A false pseudo love promoting peace and safety, but the whole time the devil, amen, is plotting their death, amen. I want to show you what love is, amen. I want to show you what love is. Go to 1 Corinthians. Amen. Verse 13, or chapter 13, excuse me. First Corinthians chapter 13. Amen. Everyone have it? The Bible reads, Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels and have not charity, I have become a sounding brass or a tinkling cymbal. And though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith so that I could remove mountains and have not charity, I am nothing. And though I bestow all my goods to the, feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned and have not charity, it profits me nothing. And charity, the word charity means love. Charity suffers long and is kind. Charity envies not. Love vaunts not itself. It is not puffed up, does not behave itself unseemingly, seeks not her own, is not easily provoked, thinks no evil, rejoices not in iniquity, but rejoices in the truth, bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endure all things. Now, and it says love never fails in verse 8. Now, when we look at this, and if you would ask most Christians what this is talking about, most would answer, well, this is love that we need to treat other people nicely. We need to pat them on the back. We need to encourage them. And we need to on and on and on and on. And this is what most people think love is. That's not what that's talking about. That is not what that is talking about. This love that we read in chapter 13 is talking about the love of the truth. The love of the gospel. The love of Jesus Christ and what he did to take our sins away. It's talking about the love for the cross. It's not talking about emotional love. It's not talking about a pseudo love. That's what the Antichrist wants you to believe. That's not what it's talking about. It's talking about the cross of Christ here as in love. I want you to read it now with your spirit. Now look with it with your spiritual eyes and have ears to hear, amen. And look at this, amen, as of what Jesus has done for you at the cross. Though I speak with tongues of men and of angels and have not charity, I don't love for the love of the truth. I have become a sounding brass or a tinkling cymbal. 
And though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith so that I can remove mountains and not have love for the truth, the cross of Christ, I am nothing. Jesus himself said, there's going to be many in that day saying, Lord, Lord, have I not prophesied? Haven't I done all these great things in your name? He's going to say, depart from me, for I never knew you. Because they received not the love of the truth, the cross of Christ, the blood of Jesus, the message of the cross, whichever terminology you want to put it as. And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned... Now, most people would think that's love. The world would think that's love. Yeah, that's it. Think about that. Amen. And have not charity. Most would ask, how in the world could you have not love if you're feeding the poor and, 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 and giving my body to be burned? And I thought that's what love was. But yet the Holy Spirit says, even if you do all these things and don't have love for the blood of Jesus, it profits you nothing. It's all about the cross of Christ. It's all about him shedding his blood and loving him for that. And look at verses 4 through 8. This is talking about the cross. Charity suffers long. Oh, the Lord suffered for us, amen, and he went to that willingly for us, amen. And this kind, charity envies not, love vaunts not itself, it's not puffed up. Think about what Jesus did at the cross as I'm reading this does not behave itself unseemly, seeks not her own, is not easily provoked, thinks no evil, rejoices not in iniquity, but rejoices in the truth, bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never fails. The cross will never fail. That's right. Hallelujah. The blood will never fail. Love him for who he is and what he's done. Most churches have a spirit of the Antichrist, amen, and they're giving a pseudo-love, a false love, patting people on the back and telling them it's okay when it's not, That's right. amen. You have to come to the blood of Jesus Christ, and if you do, it will never fail. You will not be deceived, amen, because the Holy Spirit who embodies in you will give you an unction in your spirit, and you will know something is wrong. Amen. The cross of Christ is true love. Amen. The love of God. But the, the, the Antichrist and the spirit of the Antichrist that's working in many and thousands of churches today is promoting a false pseudo love. And just as Israel will be blinded and deceived by the Antichrist, most of the church has been blinded and deceived by a false pseudo-love, which is psychology, promoting self, giving flatteries, patting people on the back, never coming to the knowledge and the truth of the blood of Jesus and not receiving it. I mean, re really read this in, in, in verse Chapter 13, 1 through 8. My Lord, amen. And study that out and look at it as to what Christ has done for you at the cross. And let God, the Holy Spirit, give you a revelation what the agape love is. Amen. I could read that all night long. Though I speak with tongues of men and of angels and have not the love of the truth. The truth is Christ and them crucified what he did, taking away your sins. I become a sounding brass, tinkling cymbal. Though I have gifts of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith and have not love for the truth, I am nothing. And right here is the kicker. This should, this should shoot down anybody's theory about the, this love talking about being emotional or doing good works. Because the Holy Spirit, amen, through Paul himself says, and though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned, 
Most people in the church world will think that's some kind of God love. But if there's no love for the truth, the blood of Jesus, it profits me nothing. True love, amen, that suffers long and is kind and envies not, amen, is not puffed up, does not rejoice in iniquity, is not a bragger of itself, amen, bears all things, endures all things, amen, and never fails. It's talking about the cross of Christ, the blood of Jesus, what the Messiah did for our sins, went to the cross, amen, was nailed there, shed his blood and took him away. But the Antichrist and the spirit of the Antichrist, which is in many churches today, and and, and if you don't believe me, let's just turn to 1 John. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. First John chapter two, verse eighteen. This is in John the Beloved's time. It says, Little children, it is the last time, and as you have heard that the Antichrist shall come, even now. See, it was even prevalent in John's day. Even now are there many antichrists. Whereby we know that it is the last time. There's many churches that have the spirit of the Antichrist. They look like an angel of light with a false pseudo love. Trying to draw people in by fads and goods and works and whatever. And worldly music, rock and roll and fog machines and everything else under the sun. Amen. But they're refusing and have received not the love of the truth, the blood of Jesus. And because of that, many are swayed away and are believing a lie. True love is the blood of Jesus. Loving Him for who He is and what He's done. Amen. And when you look at that 1 Corinthians chapter 13 and study it out in the context to the cross of Christ and what Jesus has done for our sins... Amen. It takes on a whole new meaning of what love is. Amen. And, but the Antichrist, amen, just as what the spirit of the Antichrist is doing today, he will come with a false peace and a false safety and a, and a, a pseudo-love deceiving people because they receive not the blood of Jesus. Amen. And then halfway through the seven-year pact of this false pseudo-love, guess what? Three and a half years into it, he makes war. That's what Satan does. He gets people into churches that are preaching false lies. Amen. Pseudo love. He gets them in there. They get comfortable in their seats and they get their snacks and their Oreo cookies and milk. And, and they say, peace and safety. And then all of a sudden... Satan comes down on them and their whole world crumbles. Amen. And many of them take their own lives and, or end up in jail or, or find themselves out on the streets, amen, strung out with alcohol or drugs or um, destroyed families. Because this is what the spirit of the Antichrist does. He deceives people into believing a, fault, a lie, false love, saying it's all right. Amen. Because they received not the truth, the love of the truth, the blood of Jesus. And so they accept this, they get comfortable, amen, in whatever church they attend, believing they're a good person with high self-esteem and all this. And then they say in their heart and in their mind and in their spirit, peace and safety. And then all of a sudden, Satan attacks without warning and destroys them. Just like what the Antichrist will do and just like what the spirit of the Antichrist is doing in many churches to many people. And the reason being because they love, receive not the love of the truth, the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. If you get anything out of this message, if you place your faith in the blood of Jesus and love him for who he is and what he's done, 
The Holy Spirit will abide in you. He will be upon you. Grace will flow freely and you shall not be deceived by the spirit of the Antichrist. Just like what Israel will do, amen, being deceived. But if you reject the blood of Jesus and do not love him for that, amen, God will give you a strong delusion to get you on your knees just like he will Israel so that you'll come to the truth. Amen. Amen. Would you stand? And next Thursday we'll continue on in the four horsemen and show you what the spirit of the Antichrist and what the Antichrist himself will do. Proclaims peace and safety until you feel comfortable and let your guard down. Amen. Because people start believing a lie and then all of a sudden, just as we'll see with the second horseman, he comes and attacks to steal, to kill, and to destroy. Amen. So it's oh so important, church. Love him for who he is and what he's done and that alone. Because when this is all over, whether it be by the graveside, whether it be by the rapture, the only thing that's going to matter is your faith in Christ Jesus and what he's done at the cross and just loving him for that. Amen. Amen. Heavenly Father, Lord, we love you. And Father, I've done my best to minister your word tonight, Lord. Take it to the hearts of your people, Lord, and let them know, Lord, that the love of God is your son going to Calvary, Lord, and us just loving him for who he is and what he's done. And Lord, we'll give you all the praise and glory. Touch every single person, Lord, that listens to this message. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. God bless.